You're listening to episode 86 of the D6 Podcast. Here's the encouragement I give you. The shortest distance between your child's heart, your grown child's heart, and Christ is you. Parents need to own that they are the primary disciples of their child. Our goal in parenting is not for our kids ultimately to get a great education, as good as that is. Our goal is not for them to be great athletes. Our goal is not for them to go on great dates and find a great husband or a great wife. Our goal is not for them to have a great career with a great job, making great money. Our goal is for them to love a great God. A great God, a great God. You're listening to the D6 Podcast. Here's your hosts, Ron Hunter and Jeremy Lee. This is the family ministry podcast that helps you connect the church and home. And Ron, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Frosty the snowman. Oh, we're having carol time. Christmas carol time. Oh, it stops with one line for me, though. You can sing on, though. Christmas karaoke. That could be what we do for episode 100. <laughs> that, ooh. And we could have a uh, call in. <laughs> Let's, we better move on or we're going to get in trouble. Hey, listen, I hope everybody is excited to be here. I'm excited to be here. Michael Bain is our guest, and he's going to be all about productivity. And you guys are managing your shopping lists and all the different things that are happening around the holidays. You probably might be inspired to get organized. So my man Michael is going to help you out with that, especially from a ministry context. Then we have Ben Crabtree, uh, you said was in the military, and takes ministry from that perspective in a way. That's right. He's really doing a good job shaping his entire church to think more discipleship, generational discipleship, and is shifting an already strong church into a stronger church. And I think he's going to have some good insight for us from a practical level. And before we go too far, we have a special announcement. Now, I always hate these sometimes because people might be listening to our podcast later, but if you're in real time and you're listening the week we release this podcast, there is a very special announcement we don't want you to miss about the D6 conference. That's right. People who plan early, and this is good for the Michael Bain episode, people who organize yeah. plan early, they're going to get a discount, a significant discount. It's our very best price break that we offer all year long, and it closes December 31st. Mm. So you need to go sign on to d6conference.com. And uh, if you do so, you're going to save over $100 per ticket compared to our standard rate that you'd pay later in the year. Yeah, the price will be one. Is that right? One ninety nine. Yes, yes. And Jeez. that's that's three days of conference content. If you, I mean, if you like the podcast, can you imagine rubbing shoulders with everybody sitting in the in the room, hearing these speakers live? And you're hearing we've got planned about twelve to fourteen main stage speakers, fifty two different uh, breakout speakers. So you can choose all kinds of different topics, no matter what your area of ministry is, or maybe you're a volunteer, you're a parent, or you're a grandparent. This will improve your marriage, your parenting skills, your grandparenting skills. You just need to bring a team. That's what churches who are really tackling discipleship effectively do. They don't just send their leaders. They bring their team. They come together. They strategize, and they go back, and they put into practice what they're hearing. And there's no better place to do it than to unplug. Right now, you're listening to the podcast. You're in isolation. You bring your team to a conference. You can sit down, map it all out. Very different than having headphones on. Perfect. We'll make a plan to attend the D6 conference. And if you aren't good at making plans, my man, Michael Bain's got an interview for you here right after the break. It's going to be great. We'll listen to him very shortly. Splink is a simple way to help families in your church link together spiritually. It comes as a free weekly email with ideas that parents can use to have fun, make memories, and talk with their kids. Those teachable moments give moms and dads opportunity to share spiritual truths and life lessons. And no matter how busy life is, there's always time to Splink. Share d6family.com with the parents in your ministry so they can sign up today to start receiving free weekly Splink. It's, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from South Carolina, Mr. Michael Bain. Hey, buddy. Man, so happy to have you. Michael has spent the past 19 years serving churches and investing in families in four different states. And he's currently on one of his greatest adventures. You're yeah. like Stephen Curtis Chapman, man. This is the Saddle great adventure. Up your horses. That was awesome. <laughs> Saddle up. We got a 1990s Christian music reference there. 
Yes. Uh, he's going to be the lead pastor. Going to be. I guess you are the lead pastor at Greenville Apparently. Community Church. It's just small band. Greenville G- Community Church at the time of this recording really has uh, not launched officially yet. launched, but it's on its way. Uh, it launches in January of 2018. So by the time a lot of people hear and see yeah. this, it will already be going. Michael is married to Chelsea, who's amazing, better, way better than you. Totally. And they have two incredible daughters. So if you haven't figured this out, Michael's my friend. And I can mess with him and talk to him. But here's one of the things I've been able to see with you, Michael. I've been able to get a backstage pass into your life. You've allowed me that access. So I've been able to see you go through a lot of struggles, a lot of pain, a lot of hard times. You have served as youth minister, uh, pastor, executive pastor. You've done a lot of different things. You've seen your church through uh, transition, uh, through crisis. You had some staff members struggle with moral failure. You've, and you've uh, had to let staff members go. I could keep going on and on. <laughs> Went through a lot of stuff. You have managed yeah. all of this with uh, a lot of grace, and, um, and you have pursued health in the process, yeah. and that has been amazing. So let's start with this. Well, this is what I'm going to talk about, because in all of that, yeah. you continue to be one of the most efficient dudes I've ever seen. Like I send you a text, boom, the text comes right back. I get, you send you an email, the email comes right back. You're creating this content. You're doing this. It's just your bandwidth is large. And the, the way you're able to handle stuff, and it all comes from your focus on productivity. So that's what I want to talk about today with you. That's fine. Yeah. Is uh, how to stay organized and productive in ministry. So let's start with this. How do you manage those texts and emails with such ease? What are some of the tools and best practices that you live by? Because email sometimes eats up our day and yes. destroys our uh, efficiency. So talk well, to hear, us about it. Well, first off, it is good. You did, You have walked me through a lot of... You've seen the the real parts of ministry, yes. and we've like we're we're really friends. Yeah. So that makes this even more fun. So thanks for being a friend in all those journeys. But yeah, I think I hear more and more people talk about um, the way email. They hate email. Uh, they they're resenting their phone more and more and more. Uh, they feel overwhelmed with just the idea of being on demand or being on call. And I, I just chose a long time ago to change the way that I perceived email and text. And so, and also to put it through a filter, which means I, I'm in control of it. It's not in control of me. And I think that's the first thing that I would, I would tell people, I would encourage them to build a system that works for them. Now I'm a relational leader. I'm a relational person. Uh, if you've taken the Enneagram, we'll talk about that later. I'm a seven. So if you haven't, seen that go go take that personality profile um and but and so i find joy in being with people and connected with people and so email and text is something that's very uh, a, a way of my life uh, the way that i see to build trust with people and so i've taken email taken text and kind of filtered it through like the way that i respond to email the way that i handle email the way that i handle texts is an act of building trust. So just simply, the simple thing that I do is I I try to put my, again, I'm in control of the phone. I'm in control of my computer. It's not. And so I put the messages. I do check it frequently. I'll just be honest. For me, like I stay on top of my email. I stay on top of my text. So that's number one for me. That's not how other people handle it by scheduling off blocks of time where they go back. And that is completely fine. But I also put everything that comes through through a filter of trust. Like meaning like I give different priority to different messages and different people. You are my friend. When you email me, you're going to get a text back. Even if it's, hey, I, I, I'll get to you. I'll get to you. And I think that's one of the things I think we've got to give people permission with email and with text to treat it more relationally and to respond quickly. Even if you can't give a full like response to an issue or a problem, just to affirm the person sending it by going, hey, I've got your message. And I'm going to be working on this. I w- and then literally schedule it. You know, I moved everything that I do over to Gmail. I'm an Apple guy, and I love Google. And so I use both platforms. So the Apple platform, the Google platform, and I kind of mess the two. But on email, man, I just there's so many hacks there now that I can respond to somebody and say, "Hey, I'll get back to you." And I can even reschedule that email to pop back up to remind me to attack it later. How do you do that? There are tons of apps within the backside of Gmail. 
where they're all, and I don't even remember their names, like they're little add-ons that you put into your Gmail profile that are tools that you can go. One of them is called Boomerang. Yeah, one of them is Boomerang. And so, and you can, like, you just hit it and you schedule it and it will pop back up like as a new email. You can now code it. You can put it like as a priority as I'm going to get back to it. And that's already built into Gmail app. So you can just hit it, code it as a color and know, oh, if it's a green email, I got to come back to it because that's a growth opportunity. But also be willing just to know like, um, you know, Gmail does a good job of filtering out the noise. And so that I don't, my spam doesn't hit my, my it's my spam folder. It's my collection folder, promotions folder. And I, I, I still scroll through that, but I click on what I want to and I hit delete all to what I don't. Are you an inbox zero guy? No, I am not. I am a, uh, what I like, uh, a lot of my friends are. But I don't even worry about I'm like, who cares? Inbox zero. What do you mean? To me, uh, email is just a treasure trove of relationships and old conversations. And so it doesn't really bother me. that I, I, I do like to keep mine red. I'm an habitual, like, have I paid attention to it? Have I labeled it? Have I dealt with it? And then move on. And the same with text. I just don't like to, I, I don't like to get way behind. A text are a bigger issue because, you know, um, a lot of people have our cell phone now. And they're, they're sent, so it's a little harder with text, but I would even say with text, do your best to stay up on it, but give yourself some grace and some mercy. You know, man, these are the people I'm going to really, really track with. And these are the people, man, I will get to it if I, it, you know, I can. And so, and don't, and, and be quick to apologize. I was like, Hey, I missed that. I'm sorry. But remember, the way that you handle text and email, honestly, and this is what I can't get people to understand, it is an indicator of responsibility and trust. And if people know they can email you and they can at least know that you received it and know you're working on it, they learn over time to build trust. And that's what we're in. We're in a trust economy. I mean, like with parents, with your staff, with like, I just think it's an easy way if you handle it well to prove to somebody, hey, you know what you're doing and you're on top of your game. What about your schedule and your calendar? What are some tips to make sure you don't double book over schedule Uh, or make time uh, for me? What's important? So calendar and schedule is harder than email and text for me because it's uh, I live in the moment and so. I'll get to that later. And I'm going to tell you, what happened to me was that I'll get to it later or I'll schedule it later really bit me in the behind and really caused me some pain, ministry pain. So what I had to learn to do was leverage the technology again. uh, And also, so when somebody says, when we make a calendar, I've gotten to a habit. Like, so I leverage, I leverage three different calendars. I leverage my personal calendar that I share with my wife. I think that's a big deal. So she can get to that. She can see that. Uh, we have a church calendar that she manages, but I have access to. And then we have a family calendar. That, and all both of us kind of have input. Now, my wife's on our team, our, plan, our launch team. She's our executive pastor. So she has a lot of say. I let her manage that because I'm not great at managing that. So, but I can get to it. I can add to it. So here's what I've learned. Leverage and share as many calendars as you can. And also, when you, as soon as you, I just had an email come in a few minutes ago. It was with a, a, somebody I'm meeting with in, our, in Greenville um, who works for Habitat Humanity. He needed to move a meeting. I didn't wait to change it. I changed it immediately. Mm. Change it immediately. Now, a lot of my friends are using Google Calendar. And they can send invites, and, and, and I, I'm just not smart enough for it yet. Me neither. I can't figure it out. I, uh, but I like I, I like the Apple side on the calendar thing, and that's just. But but you know whatever, leverage that device in your pocket. It will remind you. It will tell you, hey, you've got this coming. Hey, don't forget this. Look, and, and just the old school thing of like every day, get up, look at your calendar. And I found with calendars too, and just managing your day. What ca- what a calendar allows me to do is schedule what is important so that I can focus. So I calendar my study time. I calendar, all of my kids' events are calendar because I want to know, hey, I, I've, I've got a commitment. I've told, I've got this to be at, I've got that. That's just as important as any ministry meeting I will ever have. And so I want a calendar, like my kid needs me to be at school. I want that on my calendar so I can say no to things that are just distractions and yes to the most important things. So, I mean, you got to, again, email, trust, calendar, accountability to focus on like, what matters? And you could calendar, hang out with my kid. Absolutely, 100%. And more, more of us should. More of us should calendar your date nights, 
calendar your calendar your reading time calendar your 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 time that is just for focus and reflection just soaking in the scripture taking time to prayer taking time to pray um calendar your prep time your study time uh because like if you don't do those things what what you sat again we're back to sacrificing our souls in order to advance uh, somebody else's metric okay okay hold on now you're stealing the thunder of my next question <laughs> Because another thing that I know about you is uh, you love to play golf. You've got your big green egg. I, I swear, do. if you're if you're Facebook friends with Michael, I you're going to see pictures barbecue. of meat mm-hmm. about at least once a week from his big yeah. green egg. Usually twice. But uh, I uh, but the thing that I've always treasured and loved about you is that you honor your personal time, and, yeah. but you have so much going on. I do have a lot. So there's a lot of people who really need help with that, who say, man, I would love to have some big green egg time. Yes. But life just, you you must not have as much of an exciting ministry as me because life doesn't allow me that. Yes. Well, what did you, what would you say lovingly to someone who says life doesn't allow them personal well, time? Well, I would say that if when you don't have, everybody needs a hobby. Um, and what a hobby does is it just, like, it just lets you go to a place where you can have time to just find joy. I mean, like God is, so theologically speaking, God made this, everything around us. Like, and he made us to find joy in him and his creation. And so I try to look for hobbies that allow me. I like to hike. I find joy in that. I like to golf. I find really, I find joy in that. That's me. But the the thing is, that's like me time. Cooking was a hobby that allowed me to invest in my friends and my family. And so, but I find extreme joy in that. Like, so it's a little mix of um, finding things that allow you just to like decompress. So people who say, I don't have time for that. I'll say, well, you don't, you won't make it. You will not survive the grind, the grind of the emotional wear that relational ministry, a relational job, a calling. Uh, and I would say that for a teacher or a police officer or a, a manager in a, in a business setting, I would just say when it's relational and people are draw, making withdrawals from your bank, you've got to have some time to replenish that with those withdrawals that are coming. And so what I find is with my hobbies, I schedule them. Again, I come back to scheduling. So I, like, I kind of look ahead and go, I have something to look forward to that's going to be uh, a deposit in my soul. So I schedule it. And I don't get to do it a lot. And I'm planting a church right now, and I have even less time to do it. It's so funny. I don't have, my church is not operational yet. We have a launch team, but I'm busier than ever. But I'm still, look, I still have to look forward to. And then the, the egg thing, man, I mean, it's just like something, again, it doesn't all have to be outside or take away. That's something my family, all of us can do. We love barbecue. And so uh, it was an investment, and it's a hobby, and I love doing it, so it's worth it. It's, and it's worth it not just because I like barbecue. It's worth it because um, even if I have to get up at 4 in the morning, that's what nobody knows. Like, I may have to get up at 4 in the morning to check the temperature on something or make sure something's cooking right. To me, I'm doing that because I want to do that. That's something hard. That's hard to do. That's a challenge. But it refuels my soul, and it just brings just a mix of diversity to relationships, and my neighbors love it. Mm, it's okay, an evangelistic so, tool. Um, <laughs> unbelievably, we only have a few minutes left. But yeah. I want to make sure we talk about this. You and Chelsea kind of attack. You don't do life together. You uh, attack life together. together. Yeah, we do. You like yeah. slay it. We so love my it. whole thing is, how do you and Chelsea, your wife, stay on that same page? What are some tips you may have for us to? Because you know you're doing family, but you're also working together at a church. You're doing a lot of different things. Yeah. You're doing it all together. So how are you doing that? Well, one of the things that we that we decided we made this, we made a visual weekly reminder of what is going on in all of our lives. So, you know, when you talk about doing life together with Chelsea, and it's really our girls, a freshman and a sixth grader and us, we're all kind of doing that together. We're planting the church together. We work together. So one of the things that we did was we try to do to stay on top for each other is we literally created this really, really cool um, wall calendar that would hang where there's some wall art, but it looks cool. And, um, and, but we literally Monday through Sunday, we know what are the big things happening in all of our lives. And then we also have one block where it's going to be scripture. So it's just one other reminder of, and so right now it's that, that thought from Galatians of let us not grow weary. 
of doing what is good. And that's kind of our theme verse right now. It's like we're in a high stress season that won't last forever, but let us not grow weary. So we're, we're visibly looking at, here's what we gotta accomplish. And it's a reminder like, I gotta pray for her. I gotta pray for Cosby, I gotta pray for Chelsea. And here's the other thing about with Chelsea and I are friends first. So like our marriage is built on friendship. So we just, we, we, we make sure our girls know it's time to go to bed, it's time to go to bed. So we block out time at night, we have time, we, um, we catch up, we do all the things that you, people go, oh yeah, sure. But literally we're doing things that don't cost a lot of money now, like, like, cause we don't have a lot of money, we're planting a church. So like, um, just having time to go like, um, during the week to go grab a cheap lunch somewhere and just sit down and go, hey, how are you? Are you okay? Um, having time at night just to check in and just laugh and watch watch something on Netflix. Um, having time just to high five, share what each other are reading on. We just try to stay relationally connected and be as honest as we can with each other to, to go, hey, this is what it happens. And also, and you add this in here, one minute I get to here, here the most important decision that I, the most important thing that happened to me last year was getting a therapist. Mm. Like when I think about that and a lot of ministry leaders, they don't, they don't understand, they don't talk about it. They're scared to mention it. But listen, I have a therapist. He's a coach. His name is Jeff Helton. Go look him up. Mm-hmm. He loves Jesus. I connected with him through a trusted friend through you. So you knew about this guy and you said, Hey, go check it out. Cause he's mine too. He's yours too. And so, uh, it was one of the best decisions for our family because even though right now we're not on a regular schedule, it's coming up time to where we'll get back on um, every other month. Because we're in like a ma- we're just in a maintenance mode right now. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I know um, my wife has a clear call to make if things are going wrong, mm-hmm. and she can call my therapist and go, "Hey, I need help," and I can, or she can challenge me to go, "Hey." You're a little stressed out because ministry is like leading in the church is stressful at every level. Youth pastor, senior pastor, all those kind of things. Like, and so sometimes you just need you need a safe place to kind of help you to see reality and challenge you to pursue the most important things over the things that are just like busy right now on your schedule. Perfect. His name's Michael Bain. B a y n e, not like Bain and Batman. <laughs> no. No. MichaelBain.net. Check him out online. Thank you for being here, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Do you ever feel as if you spend so much time doing the work of the ministry that you never actually minister to people? Wouldn't it be great if you had a little help with your ministry to-do list? What if you already had two training emails for your volunteers each month along with a fully produced video that drove the point home? What if you were able to share nearly every main stage talk that has ever happened at the D6 conference with your ministry team? Imagine having a ministry coach pour into you personally each month. What if we gave you a resource that you could give to parents in your ministry to have tough conversations around life's difficult topics? This is the kind of stuff they can really use, and they'll be grateful to receive. When you become a member of the D6LN, we immediately make your life easier. We help you with your weekly event, teacher training, family ministry, parent helps, and your own personal ministry helps. The D6 Leader Network is going to give you content, coaching, and community throughout the entire year. The D6 Leader Network makes awesome easy. Just go to d6leader.net to give it a try today. Thank you, Mr. Michael Bain. I'm telling you, that guy. I love how he approaches that. Just He's just so fun. Mm. I love him. Uh, speaking of fun, I hope you have some fun with Mr. Ben Crabtree. I did. You know, he, we, we I poked some fun at him in this podcast, and we had to start over a couple of times because I, I actually called him a Marine in the midst of this, and he took a little offense to that. Uh, but, but yeah, he served in the military, and, and he's a go-getter, high-capacity guy. And this is a guy that is helping parents and grandparents discover their role and being very intentional when they're not at church in – Again, I want to emphasize they're already in a strong church, a very healthy church, but they're getting more healthy by emphasizing generational discipleship. And he's just going to he's going to share some real insight on you, steps for vision, you know, how to work through it. I I just appreciate his heart. So follow him very carefully and you will hear some uh, some transferable principles as you would say, Jeremy. We're sitting here with Ben Crabtree. Uh, he's a he's been a friend for quite a while, and 
Ben and I had breakfast together at a larger conference in uh, North Carolina, and I got a chance to listen to him talk about some of the things he's uh, encountering, how he's leading in discipleship. And I've asked him to be part of the D6 podcast because I think he's in a unique situation. He's newer to his position. He's the outreach and discipleship pastor at Unity Church in Greenville, North Carolina. But you're bringing a new emphasis to your church, and it's on discipleship. So talk about where you saw the church and where you'd like to see it go, and then we'll dive into some of the specifics of this. Well, I'm not going to go into the complete history, but um, you know that in 2009, I went into the military, um, and I didn't know why uh, that God was leading me that way, but then when I left, I knew, and I've told you this, the military is full of people who used to go to church. Yes. Uh, grandma took me, dad took me, people took me, and I and I looked at uh, at churches, not just at unity, but churches in general, and I, I started to ask the question, what is the application of what we're hearing every Sunday morning? Um, do we believe what we're, what we're hearing? Do we believe what we're, our preachers are preaching? Um, and, uh, so I began to ask those questions and actually on my interview Sunday, I said that if you hire me, the first thing we're going to do is in reach. We've got to look inside before we go outside. There's some questions that have to be asked. So that was the starting point for us. So I'd like for you to name, what are the three or four obstacles that Unity Church, which truthfully looks probably like many churches across America and around the world, what do we have to overcome? Well, I think the uh, from a military standpoint and just leadership, I think we uh, we lack vision. Um, we don't think 20, 50, 100 years down the road. We think about tomorrow or next Sunday. Let's get through next Sunday service about our comfort. Are we teaching young people and training them to be the next. And, and you know, as a military, it's the backwards planning. Where are we 50 years from now? The potential is unlimited if we just stop and think. If we would reach 10% of our population, that's 15 to 20,000 new believers every year. But those numbers aren't doing it. So evangelism isn't happening. So I think that was my second thing is just, just getting on fire for what we believe in. If you have the faith, you're going to work. Um, and so, you know, from the military, it's, hey, if it needs to be done, we're going to do it. Uh, and sometimes they'll give you obstacles to work through those, those, those problems to make sure that the job gets done. You know, you may be going through a, um, a scenario and they give you bad ammo. You still got to get there. You still mm-hmm. have to fight the fight. And so we need to be having the vision and then we need to, we need to train our folks to be willing to work um, and, and catching that vision. Um, and then third... You know, there's something to be said about being in Fort Drum where he calls the frozen chosen or sleeping in the middle of the fields. I, there's something to be said about the working through hard because um, it gets you stronger to the end. And I think sometimes we as a church are a little too comfortable. Uh, we've got a lot of comforts, man, and, and we've got to take away some of our desires to be comfortable. So what are you going to go and do in church? What, what's, what's the next two years hold for your idea of vision, getting on fire, working through the problem there in your position? Um, you and I have been talking through how to implement, okay, how do we get the Deuteronomy 6, the D6 material and the scope and sequence? How do we get that structure? And so what I've done is I have followed your advice. I've, give, I've bought a bunch of copies of the book. And I've sat down with folks and we've had coffee and we've talked about it. And this Sunday, actually, we're meeting as a group. And I'm saying, this is where we're going to be going. Um, this, is the, this is the structure we want to do. And we want to train you to do this and start that way. And then I talked with Jake, our youth pastor, saying, okay, that's the next step, steps. And then Jake and I will work together to say, how do we get it in touch with the um, the adults and those kind of things. And so, yeah, you're um, asking the right questions. And by the way, I didn't think you would answer that way, but you didn't mention the book. You said you bought a bunch of the books, but you're referring to the oh, DNA, sorry, the the DNA of yeah, DNA of D6. And yeah, so I'm sorry I think that's the key that people need to hear is whatever your vision is, you've got to, oftentimes pastors have that vision, but they don't know how to transfer it. And mm-hmm. putting a book in their hands, whether it's DNA of D6 or another book called Discipleship, and there's a lot of them out there, you've got to put good resources into people's hands, help them catch the vision and the principles behind why you're asking them to change the vision. 
And I will tell you this, Ron, and this is something that I, last year I tried what I called disciple you playing on the unity word Mm -hmm. uh, where I went through and I taught an extensive Bible study and it went great. I had 70 some students and there was a lot of response, but this year I've prayed that God would give me 12 people over the next three years to sit down with and just, just disciple them and mentor them. And he's already blessed me with 11 people. And I'm, I'm challenging them to do the same thing. And now they're starting to see some that are teaching others what they've been taught. And it's starting to catch on. Right. Um, they're getting excited and they're starting to get excited to tell others. And I'm not, a, I'm not an expert. I'm just trying to look at the scriptures and say, God, what do you want us to do? And it's, there's some simple truths there just to, just to go and tell and learn the scriptures. Um, and there's going to be some people that say, no, that happens everywhere. But the ones that say, yes, you build on it, and then you're reaching people, I believe. I want to know, if I were a life group leader in your church, what are you trying to teach me about discipleship? Right now, um, we have, well, okay, if it's the children, basically they can learn, Um, especially the younger kids. They They can learn this stuff. They can learn discipleship. They can learn the truths of salvation. They can learn God's word. They can memorize scriptures. We know it from Awanas and other things. They can learn these things. And so be confident that this structure is going to work. Um, but for the adults, um, I, I'm just praying that they have um, just a willingness to listen to my heart um, and take the God's word and say, you know what? This, this idea of just having a Sunday school class is not it. The idea is to engage in your class and as a teacher— to begin looking for others in your class that they can do what you're doing to start 10 more classes. Um, because we don't want to just reach our folks. We want the guy that comes in off the street to, that's lost, that comes to know Christ as a savior to be discipled by one of these teachers. Then five, 10 years from now, he's teaching a class doing the same thing. And his testimony is, Oh, this is my, this is the guy that discipled me. This is the guy that led me to the Lord. And now I'm leading this guy to the Lord. I, that's the picture we see in acts. So that's what I want to see here. Um, just the transition. So So what are the parents taking away? Do they understand the responsibility that church lessons and discipleship does not remain only on campus of the church, that they have a responsibility at home? Yes, I think they know that. They're asking how. Um, I think that there's some um, some very, um, well, this last year, uh, our youth pastor, Jake, did what he, um, what he called like tough topics, talking about transgender uh, things that we're dealing with here in North Carolina, homosexuality, drugs, alcohol, um, you know, cursing, bad language, just very tough topics. But what he did was he sent his lessons to the parents first saying, this is what's going to be taught. He would teach it with a recording and then send it back to the parents again and trying to get those conversations engaged. And it, even in my life, my daughter would ask questions, dad, what is this thing he's talking about transgenderism and why is that such an issue? And it opened up huge conversations for our family. Um, So it's beginning to take place. Uh, We just want to go to the next level. We we are at the place where, okay, we finished basic training. Now we want to go to the AIT. We want to go to advanced training. We want to get more specific about what we're doing. And then from there, we may find the future leaders and we'll find the future soldiers. Uh, And then there may be some in there that may need to be recycled back to do it again because they don't have it. Right. But it's okay. That, that's that's fine. Um, and I'm excited to see what God's going to do. I really am. That's exciting. Thank you, Ben, for sharing where you are in the midst of this battle and all that you're doing. I, uh, I think our listeners are encouraged and can identify with many parts of what you're facing. Well, I appreciate the opportunity. And uh, I mean this, I pray for our churches. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Yes, sir. Well, our thanks go to Mr. Ben Crabtree. I appreciate you laying it down for us today. And guys, I hope that you have been inspired to get yourself organized and to have some strategy behind your family ministry today. Mm -hmm. I also hope that somewhere, some way, you are celebrating Christmas because it's a great time of year. And I want to make sure you guys know that next week we will have a podcast. We will be dropping a podcast, even though... It will be the day after Christmas. We'll still be there. That's right. We're getting up early, coming in, knocking no, we it out. Are not. But we are not going to hear you sing any more Christmas songs. <laughs> That's right. That's what we're going to do for next week's podcast. We're just going to sing Christmas carols to you the whole time to keep you in the... Oh, we just lost our whole audience. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, Philip Nation will be our guest next week. You guys are going to love him. He's going to be talking about spiritual disciplines for the family. You guys are going to enjoy him. It's a really great interview. Hope you guys have a great week celebrating and enjoying this holiday. We'll see you next Tuesday. You've been listening to the D6 Podcast. You can learn more about D6 at d6family.com. And if you're a minister, we invite you to join the D6 Leader Network by going to d6leadernetwork.com. 